Hi guys, this is Michael and in this video, I'm gonna share with you all of the tools that I use as a graphic designer. So this video will cover the hardware part, some of the things that are on my desk, the softwares and the apps that I use. So I'd like to believe that I'm someone who prefers only to buy the essentials. I don't really own a lot of fancy designer stuff. Also, while I have had major upgrades over the years, I too started with very basic old stuff think of slow laptops and gadgets so don't let us stop you from being a great designer and in this video i'd be very happy to share with you like the bare minimum or the basic requirements to be a graphic designer and also the free alternatives that you can use this video is sponsored by flexispot so they sent me the e7 pro standing desk and i've been enjoying my experience so far so now i don't just have to sit i can also stand while doing my day-to-day -day work as a designer and that's very helpful for me so more on this later in the video so let's go straight to hardware and the things on my desk so first you need a personal computer or a laptop so i'm currently using this 14 inch macbook pro and i also have a pc of course, I need this to run my softwares and do my thing as a designer. So design programs can be very intensive, so having a strong PC or laptop can really help you. So you want a computer that can handle heavy programs and multiple applications and also large files. So this PC has been around for 4 years and still does the job. I also have a monitor mounted to this arm that I can adjust to my liking. I will also put the specs of my MacBook and PC on the screen just so you can check. I think when you're looking for a PC, you should prioritize three things. So it's RAM, the GPU, and storage. So one of the questions that I often get asked is, what is the best specs, um, laptop or PC for graphic designers? And that's actually a very hard question to answer simply because we have different requirements as well as budgets. So what I would suggest is to look for the minimum requirements of the programs that you'll most likely use. So for example, you'll be using mostly Photoshop and Illustrator. You can go straight to the Adobe website and there's a page there that talks about the minimum requirements to run these programs. And then when you're finding a PC, you just have to make sure that it meets the requirements. And then you can adjust the specs based on your budget. Of course, if you have the money, always go for the higher specs because you can run the program smoothly, you can run multiple softwares at the same time, and there'll be less crashes, which is very common in slow computers. Okay, so next on my list is my iPad. And honestly, I haven't been using this a lot. And this is more of a want than a need, in my opinion. And this is because I mainly use this just for illustrations, especially when I want a hand-drawn feel. I use the Apple Pencil that I brought along with it. I also use this for my logo sketches from time to time. So for illustrators, I see the need in getting an iPad, sure. But for a basic graphic design, you can probably skip this. What you can do as an alternative is to just use pen and paper and um, do your sketches, illustrations, use your phone camera to take a photo of it and import it to Illustrator, trace it using pen tool and other tools, and that's it, you can do that. Another alternative is to buy a graphics tablet. So I have one right here, and this is an old one, but it still does the job. This is from the XP Pen brand, and this is much more affordable than an iPad, and I use this for the same purposes, but this one connects to my PC and I can use directly when running Illustrator or Photoshop. So next is my external storage. So this one is the Crucial 1TB SSD. So I got myself an external SSD because you know design files can be very heavy and they take up a lot of space. So this definitely is for better file handling and you know generally better quality of life as a designer. Um, especially when you start having lots of projects and clients. Um, this one can be very handy. So I think having this is not really a necessity, especially if you have sufficient internal space. I think one terabyte is a good amount of storage. And what you can do is just do your regular cleanups. That way your drives are free from junk and you free up some space. So next are my notebooks and papers. 
So I use very generic notebooks that I just ordered online. So these are not very fancy notebooks, but what I like is they are of decent quality. So I use this for my daily to-do list, jotting down notes during meetings, and I also do some of my logo sketches and rough design ideas here. So for notes that I don't really need to keep or are not that important, um, I just use old documents, old papers, and I just use the back side of it. I think it's nice that we get to repurpose um, old documents like these. I think it's very environment friendly and it's the responsible thing to do. So the next one is my fairly new mouse. Um, I purchased this quite recently. So I used to have a wired mouse that is too small for my hand. Now I use this mouse from Logitech. This is their M720 Triathlon. It is very comfortable to use. It has a lot of buttons that you can customize. And of course it's wireless. But the best feature for me is this button here that lets me connect to up to three devices. And since I'm using a MacBook and a PC, I can just jump from my laptop to the PC very easily. And then to hold all of these things on my desk, I have the E7 Premium Standing Desk from Flexispot, which is also the sponsor of this video. So having this allows me to stand up while doing my work. So I've been using this for about three weeks already and I can actually feel like a boost of productivity when using this, when I'm standing instead of, you know, just sitting all day. And I also ask some of my friends who use standing desks and they feel the same way. They feel more energized, they feel more productive, they don't feel sleepy and sluggish. And I'm so happy that Flexispot sent me this very, you know, good product. So I'm actually someone who has a very bad posture. So I like that standing allows me to you know stretch improve my stance and prevent like back pains that you get when you sit for too long so this one has a very wide range of height i'm actually six foot flat and the highest setting is actually very comfortable for me and when you adjust this it's actually very smooth so if you have a coffee or a tea it won't spill when you adjust the height so you can see here that it has a very thick wooden base and if you check out the legs, you know that it's very sturdy. So you can see my desk is loaded, but it has no problems carrying all of my stuff. So the adjustment panel is also very nice and it has an extra USB port that you can use. So Flexispot from my experience has a very amazing customer service. I had this desk assembled by their team and they were very helpful and they gave me everything that I need to run the desk and the panel over here. So overall, I am very satisfied with this standing desk and thank you again Flexispot for sending this. Oh, and by the way, they have huge discounts for their upcoming anniversary on August 21. So stick around up to the end of the video to get more details about that. Okay, let's continue and move to the next part of the video, which is the softwares and the applications that I use. Let's start with the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, which is what I use the most as a designer. So I have a monthly subscription that includes all the programs and the ones that I use the most are Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. So these are industry standard and they are the most widely accepted. And I also use Acrobat of course for PDF stuff, Premiere Pro to edit my videos, Dimension for quick 3D renders, and on my iPad I use the Adobe Fresco for illustrations because it supports vector brushes. Now, Adobe comes with a subscription, but I was able to get it for a lower price on a Black Friday sale. So regularly check their website for sales so you can enjoy it for a lower price. As for the monthly payments for Adobe, I always treat this more of like a business expense and I always make sure that my client work covers the cost of this one. There are of course free and budget-friendly alternatives for you. Affinity Softwares have a one-time payment and it has a counterpart to most of the Adobe programs and Procreate for illustrations also has a one-time payment only and hear me out, Figma. Figma is free and super powerful and right now it's not just for web design, UI, UX. It can do a lot of things that you do in Illustrator or Photoshop. 
Plus, it's a web platform so you can work everywhere. You just need an internet connection. So lastly, I will be sharing these graphics for other free alternatives that you can use. So you can just pause the video and take a screenshot of this and just check it later. Okay, next is Blender 3D, which is the program that I use primarily for all of my 3D stuff. I also do a lot of product visualizations and when I do my branding and packaging, I want my mock-ups to be very realistic when I present it to my clients and this program lets me do that. So it can show a highly realistic look of a product because I have full control on the materials. If I want it shiny, matte, metallic, or have like papery texture, I can do that. And it's honestly a game changer for me. So Blender is an open source software. So essentially it is free. I want to minimize my monthly cost as much as possible. So we're going for the free stuff. I guess one disadvantage of using this is that it has a very steep learning curve but once you get the hang of it, it becomes very easy and I think learning it is very game changer for me and honestly it's one of the best decisions that I've made. So if you are into 3D stuff, this is something that is really worth learning. So now we go with some of the tools or the websites that I use to get design assets. So the first one is fonts. So for fonts, I mainly use Google Fonts. Adobe Fonts that comes with my Adobe subscription, and Envato Elements. So Google Fonts is your best option when it comes to fonts. It is free, and what I like about it is you don't have to worry about commercial license, so it's very safe for client work. And when you turn over your files to your client, they can just easily download the fonts, and you don't have to worry about missing fonts or your client not being able to access the file. So next is mockups. So for Photoshop mockups, I mainly go for the free resources because like I mentioned, I use Blender to create my own mockups from scratch. But right now, there are lots of websites where you can download PSD mockups for free. And here are some of my favorites. So this is my favorite site, mockups-design. It has a lot of very high quality mockups and all of them are free. Yellow Images is one of the more popular ones, however, this is a paid option. But what others don't know is that it has a section for free mockups, so you can download those. This is similar to Mr. Mockup, they also have a section for free mockups. You can also check mockups on Behance, there are creators who upload very high quality mockups. So one thing to note about free mockups is that some of these require attribution and you must check that especially if you're using this for commercial work. So next is stock photos. So for stock photos, if it is needed for a project like in a branding or a packaging project, I always advise my client to purchase the images using their subscription. So most stock photos have a very complex and strict licensing terms and sometimes the usage are not transferable. So your client should be the owner of the photos that way they have full rights over the usage. It eliminates the complexities in licensing and it lifts the responsibility from you. So in cases where I just need like photos for presentations, mood boards, and some mock-ups, I just get free photos from sites like Pexels. So there are a lot of stock photo sites now that are free. Of course, their libraries are limited compared to like paid options. For very simple usage, you can get a lot from these websites. So these are the tools that I use on a daily basis as a graphic designer. I hope you find it inspiring and got a few tips from this video. Again, the things that I have now, I was able to afford them by working hard for many years. So don't let the lack of tools stop you from being a great designer. You have to be resourceful and use the free or budget-friendly alternatives that I mentioned in this video. And if you are looking to buy a standing desk or an ergonomic chair, please do check out the FlexiSpot page. So they will be having a major sale starting August 21 for their anniversary. They have a 30-day risk-free return policy and their products come with 5 years of warranty as well. And I swear to you, all of their products are of high quality and I've been really enjoying and loving my experience with this list so far. So head over to their site to check some of their amazing products, including this E7 Pro Premium Standing Desk that they sent me. 
Again, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Like, share, and subscribe for more graphic design content. So keep designing, keep inspiring, and keep creating. And I'll see you in the next video.